Let's greet Chris as we do all our visitors. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for you. Whoa. Let me digest that. <laughs> wow. I'm going to talk to you today about choosing to be spiritually minded. And look at, look at the phrase, choosing to be spiritually minded. This is a choice that a lot of you have made here today, just being here today. You could have been anywhere today. A lot of people are anywhere <laughs> today, right now as we speak. You chose to be here. You know, a lot of times we walk into the future and we look back on ourselves. They say hindsight is 2020. We look back on ourselves and we say, wow, I was really blessed back then. But it's always in the future. When we're going through the blessing, <laughs> we never see it. Being conscious has to do with being aware of your space and time. Right now, we are blessed. Right now, in this room, we are blessed. Turn to, uh, let's hit Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. When, you, when you're there, say Namaskar. Namaskar. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In, in the Lamza, it says to all creation, I think. Right? And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world. Stop there. Go ye into all the world. I'm spiritual. You told me to get out of the world. Oh, here's the command right here. Go <laughs> into the world. Not into your church. Oh, man. Go into the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. Not every Christian. It didn't say preach to every Jew, preach to every Muslim. It didn't even say preach to every human being. It said preach the gospel to every creature. Now stop here. Just, just meditate on this now for a minute. We're told by Christ here to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What kind of gospel is that? If I'm supposed to go into the world and preach this gospel to every creature, or as the Lamza version says, all creation, that means the gospel is beyond words. That means that whatever the gospel is, a dog can understand it. A bird can understand it. An insect can understand it. A bear can, a lion can understand it. Go preach the gospel to every creature. So we sat here and we thought about it. We said, well, what, what gospel would every creature in nature understand? The answer, love. A lot, of, a, 
a lot of people misinterpret that and they say, preach the gospel to every creature and they pick up their book and start talking. It's not the instruction. The instruction says every creature, a dog understands a pat on the back. A cat understands a bowl of milk. A bird understands bread, seeds, care, compassion, affection. Every creature understands love. So whatever the gospel is, it's not words. Whatever it is, go and preach the gospel. Obviously, this is some kind of an activity. Something we're supposed to be doing. Doing. Be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. Love. When you decide to live spiritually minded, you will notice that you ain't got no choice. Love swells up in your heart. Matter of fact, some of the reasons why you choose to be spiritually minded is because you, you don't even understand yourself. You say, man, I, I, I have this feeling of just love. I mean, I like people. I want to, you know, I'm always trying to help. Every time somebody got a problem, they call in me. Hi, hello, somebody in here. <laughs> You're going to go home right now, phone line. <laughs> Message said, hey, you know, I, I just wanted to call you to say, I, can you help? Can you, I need you to come and watch the kids. I, I need you to do it. I need, I, can you borrow some money? Can I, I, <laughs> you guys are usually the ones helping somebody else. <laughs> I got a witness in here. But. But look at the burden, as I mentioned, the first, the first step. Look at the burden of that. You're weighed down. Because you are in the spirit, but you're in the world. And even though you've decided to be spiritually minded, and nobody else has, <laughs> and what a burden that can be. You tell somebody, your kids, your friends, whatever, your husband, your wife, don't do that. And they do it anyway. Then they come back in sorrow. And it's your burden to still help. How many times have your kids, those that have children, you know, you said, don't, you know, I don't like so-and-so. So-and-so ain't no good. Why? Because you have wisdom. And you say, I've been there already with so-and-so. And, -so. and so-and-so's not good. Oh, Ma, Dad, man, come on, man. You always dissing my friends. Three months later. Oh, what, 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 what happened to Johnny? Oh, man, he's whack, man. Oh man, he man, I lent him my my my, my shirt. He wouldn't give me my shirt back. I, I I told him to come over and play some records when he broke my turntable. Uh, man, uh, man, Mark, could you buy me another one? <laughs> now the burden is on you. You told so and so. Don't go down that path. It's not good for you. They ain't listen. Now they walked down the path and gained wisdom. But the burden falls on you. Because the compassion and the love in your heart refuses to turn your back. So you say, come on. All right, here it is. You may give him a lecture. You may say, eh, but here it is. My love for you, I'm still going to give no matter what. You cursed me out last week, but I'm still here. This is what it is to be spiritually minded. And it's important that we all gain strength in this. Otherwise, we will become very stressed out. We become very stressful spiritual people, if there's such a term. 
<laughs> You'll be in the spirit and not, man, why God is, when, when is my day coming? Your day is there. This is your day right here. The burden is on you. The cross is on you. You are innocent. You've done no wrong. But somehow you're linked up with the wrong of others. Because of your love for them. Don't shirk from your responsibilities. Don't be afraid. This is what you're supposed to do. You are the blessing in someone's life. You are the blessing. Don't look at it as a burden. Look at it as this is who I am. And I am that I am. I am who I am. I, this is me. I am not Suzette. So I stand firm as the blessing, as the answered prayer in someone's life. You know, we, 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 we pray and then we expect a supernatural answer to the prayer. No, we each of us, each of us here are God's assistants. Think of yourself as a secretary for God. That's a new concept. I'm jotting down taking notes for God. I'm making sure God's schedules are kept. I'm making sure God answers her calls. <laughs> I'm God's secretary. And so when someone comes to the office, I meet them and say, hi, how, what, how, what can we do for you? Well, God, get me out of this. Anyone who's run a corporation knows that the CEO don't do no work. <laughs> so always the secretary. Always the manager, always that person who is not the, 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 the power, the top, the, the lead. It's always that assistant, that secretary that handles the whole company while the CEO is off water skiing. He punches up, she punches up. Hey, how's everything going in the office? And of course, if you give a negative report, it's you that's fired. <laughs> you know, no, it's you that's fired. The CEO says, well, you're not doing your job. What do you mean I'm not doing my job? These people are crazy. <laughs> but, what, but what the CEO expects is for you to handle your business. You don't keep running back to the CEO. We got a problem. <laughs> we got a problem. <laughs> no, you solve problems. And this is another level of spiritual thought that I'll give you today. Don't look for God to solve your problems. Solve God's problems. Take that in your heart today. It is empowering. When I decided to solve God's problems, my problems got solved. But when I waited on God to solve my problems, I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then you get that philosophy, wait on the Lord. Just wait, wait, wait. Life go by, you still waiting. No, reverse that real quick. God, look, there's some issues over here, but listen, I'll be right back. I'm going to solve that for you. I'll be right back. 
So-and-so over here got an issue, but I'm going to solve that, God. I'm going to come on your behalf, God, and solve these problems. You know, in the Bible, it, 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 it speaks of God as a parent. And they often use the, 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 the father analogy or a, a concept. And God as a parent, I, I often look at that and I say, if I had a parent that was a million years old, <laughs> if I had a parent that, you know, I respected and I, you know, I, I adored, I don't bring my parent problems. I bring my parents the first fruits. I don't go to my father, my mother's, I got another problem. <laughs> no, even if I got a problem, I'm going to solve it. I'm going to solve it. Now, here's what I learned, wisdom-wise. When you step up and say, God, hold on, I'm going to solve this problem, I'll be right back. God comes with you. No parent will let their child go to war and just be like, okay, you go on. Most of the time when a parent sees their child trying, they will come automatically to their aid. No prayer, no begging, no pleading. This is the spiritual walk. This is what it means to choose to be spiritually minded. Back off a little bit from the supernatural and just come to the practical real quick. Just real practical. Because when spirituality is practical in your life, God is practical in your life. I ain't even going to tell you how I got here to this podium right here. I can't, we are marveling over this. We, we, we just sit in the back just, you can't, God is awesome. Awesome. And when you walk in that, no planning on the planet earth, can achieve the things that you can achieve in Christ. So in closing, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Actually, um, I had a couple of verses to read, but um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to close it out. Just go <laughs> Yeah. Yeah.